morning, listeners. Welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ronald Coleman of RCS Technology Solutions, where we help our customers and clients attract, convert, retain more ideal clients and customers so they can achieve even greater success. This show is broken up into three sections. The first two sections we bring on subject matter experts from around the globe to give you actionable tips to help you achieve even greater success. And then the third section, I give away some uh, internet marketing tips and techniques to, you guessed it, help you achieve even greater success. Our second guest today is Jeffrey Miller. Jeffrey Miller is the hypnotic interventionalist specializing in the area of human needs psychology, hypnosis, NLP, and strategic intervention. He, is the, uh, he has launched several companies, and he is very, he's an entrepreneur at heart, and he's going to give us some great information. Jeff, you on the line? I am, Ron. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Excellent. Our first caller called in from Australia, and if I'm correct, you're calling in from Maine. I am up in the woods of Maine, north of Bangor, by 45 miles today. Wow. And uh, did you guys get snow recently? Uh, yeah, last night, Ron, as a matter of fact. Woke up, pulled the curtain open this morning at 5.30 to say, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> Another snowstorm? <laughs> <laughs> I just spent two months in St. Croix, and I came back. And, and, uh, yes. And, and I'm I saw the out. pictures, by the way. Jealous I was. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I just don't know why I didn't stay for another couple of weeks. But I would have to totally that, agree with you because I will not be here this winter at this time next year. I'm going to be in that warm yeah. climate as well. So we'll probably see you for a pina colada. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, cool. Excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and what you do, Jeff. I'm a veteran, veteran and entrepreneur. I've, I've built many businesses in my 35 plus years as a multi income stream entrepreneur. Somewhere around 10 years ago and a little longer, I was having some issues in life. And I wasn't that I wasn't making loads of money. It wasn't that I didn't have a beautiful home on the lake with the, the view looking out the ATM doors like nobody else in the world has, because that was my view. New car, new truck in the driveway, snowmobiles, you name it. I had earned every bit of it. Nobody ever gave it to me. I pulled myself up with the bootstraps over the years, took, took business serious, and I got to work. But still something was missing, Ron. And I remember years and years ago listening to the great Tony Robbins. Uh, a lot of people recognize that name. And Tony, I can remember a, a, a very, very quick story about a seminar he held in Boston many, many years ago. I think there might have been 20 or 30 people in the room. Now he packs 8,000 people into the room these many years later. But one of his books really hit me hard, and that was Awaken the Giant Within. And it was his second book, actually. And it was I said, you know, I'm six foot four, 240 pounds. I'm that giant, right? It must have something to do with me. Well, it did, but not my stature. It had to do with, with the giant within your mind. Awaken that giant. Awaken what's going on, what has gone on in your life. What do you need to change? Well, that provoked me, and then many years later, I remembered that book, that 10-plus years ago, and I said, you know, i got to find that book. I still had it in my archives, tucked away in a box. Broke it out and read it, got on the phone, tried to figure out where's Tony Robbins today, found out about these amazing seminars he does, and started in a program with him and a Dr. Chloe Madonis, who works very closely with him in human needs psychology, to know as strategic intervention. I said, this is the pill I need. This is the healer. This will help me with that stuff that's been lingering in my head since I was a kid that makes me feel just not quite good enough. But I excel in everything. Great friends, great businesses, but not great personal relationships in my own intimate life, so to speak. Why? What's causing that? What am I attracting? What am I attracting? So I started to get the answers. And when I did, I recognized I had a gift, as they say, to help others do the same. So I started on a part-time basis. I said, you know, this could be if I could help people and just, just refer my knowledge to them and help them get through the so the wheels aren't stuck in the mud anymore, so to speak, and that helps them propel their lives, I would feel amazing because life is about contribution. I'm a firm believer in that. That said, I did it, and then as time went on, I had more and more people asking me to be their coach. And coming into a semi-retirement mode in life, you know, closing down a big major real estate business and a big manufacturing business up here in Maine, getting things after the 2008 downfall of the economy, as they say, 
I said, you know, this could be it. This could be my retirement, so to speak. This could be my fun time in life to really contribute to other people. Uh, for I, well, a little over five years ago, went full time, and it has been absolutely phenomenal. I've learned neuro linguistic programming, full strategic intervention program through Tony Robbins and Dr. Corey Madonis, and then now further, I'm mentoring under uh, as a hypno uh, uh, with Dr. Mike Mandel from Toronto, and I'm into my third year as a hypnotherapist. So I've combined the three of them together in a nutshell, and I call that program 21 Days to Transform Your Mind or to Change Your Mind. And what that does is really get in there and get to the nuts and bolts about what's holding you back. And there are some amazing things that can come up when we do that, Ron. Yeah, I mean, I'm listening to you, and I'm kind of spellbound. I mean, that's amazing. You, you, you've took in three different areas and combined them together and in a 21 days. I mean, that's... Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, 21 days is, is, is psychologically speaking uh, from the experts in the science of psychology about what it takes to flip a habit. We ingrain this stuff in our head. We never realize we are born into this world and kind of helpless, right? I mean, if it wasn't for parents or other people helping us and nurturing us and nursing us, we don't know much. We couldn't survive. So people, we have to rely on people as humans when we're little from infants from birth to be taught what we need to do to survive and to move on in life. Well, God bless all those people, but they were taught by people who were taught by people who were taught by people. They did the best they could for you <laughs> as best they could. And unfortunately, some of those learned habits are not great habits for your future in life. And that is what I found. And every client I work with now in the area of what we call low self-esteem, because that's what the, the colloquial term for it is, Ron, and we have to call it something. It's low self-esteem. We all have to have a level of esteem. We all have to feel good. We all have to, because that's the drive. And business people particularly, not just others, but you think about in business, when we're growing a business, running a business, leadership in a business, if you come in the day in a crappy mood in plain English, your people are going to see that. If you come in the, in the office in the morning or into your facility, your business, and you're in a great mood, and somebody says, hey, Ron, how are you? And you go, I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. Well, they're going to look at you and go, whoa, this is fantastic. You lift people up. The people you don't lift up are the ones that start to realize, wow, what's going on with my boss? He's always in a great mood. i got to get some of that. I need to change my attitude. And that's where it starts. But we have to change. We have to flip the switch, so to speak, of that stuff that we learned that aren't particularly serving you today in your adult life. There are things in life, and every one of us being unique, and every one of us being different, and who raised us, how raised us. Even siblings will tell you that they perceive things differently from the same parents, which is a kind of ironic, but it's a fact. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. And I'm actually speaking at a conference called uh, Habitude Warrior Conference in Dallas uh, later this uh, in April, uh, this April 2021. 20, Fantastic. Yeah, and but that's what the whole conference is about: is um, habits and attitude. So when you talk about that, I mean that is the cross. That's if people can get a uh, handle on that. Uh, they can really change and modify it and grow. Absolutely correct, Ron. And it is, it is first of all, everybody listening today, and, and I want to thank you again, Ron, for inviting me on this morning. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you, sir. Everybody listening today, think about this for a moment. Just And don't do this if you're driving, of course, listening. <laughs> but you want to kind of relax. You want to kind of focus on your life. And you want to think about that for a second and go, okay, is there one particular thing that if I really relax, maybe do it later on, lie down, relax, sit in the chair, close your eyes. What thing from my childhood, if I really go into my unconscious, subconscious mind, could I think about and bring to the forefront that I'd like to have some help with, that I'd like to get some guidance with? It starts with that. People that want to change will recognize it from that. Then they'll say, you know, how much better could my life be if I could just take care of that one thing? And my question is always that. Sit down and write it on a piece of paper. I have one issue in life I'd like to change now today. What is that issue? Write it down. Look at it. Look at it as a, as a goal, so to speak. And if you don't write it down, it doesn't mean the same thing because you're actually, you're actually pushing your unconsciousness, your subconscious mind to give you an answer. And then as you read it two or three times, list underneath that five or six things that will change, not maybe, not if, 
that will change exponentially as a result of kicking that issue to the curb. If everybody would just do that, just do that, you're going to come up with an answer that's totally amazing. And then hold that as a goal set and say, this is going to be done. Now, how do I do that? What tools do I need? Whom do I need to contact? What do I need to do to help me transform my thoughts to change my mind? And that's where I come in, along with some other great coaches I know. Uh, that is great. I mean, I was going to ask you to give people some actionable tips on how they could get started. And I think you just, before I even asked you, we got another six minutes, seven minutes, and you're ahead of the game. Well, that's, that's it. You know, that's the simplest. And I'll be honest with you, as I said, not everybody wants to change. Some people are very happy being stuck in the mud. I am one guy that said no more. I've had it. You know, I had everything going for me financially, home, cars, you name it. I mean, I was on top, I was on the pinnacle, right? But there was an internal thing, my relationships, my life as far as being in an intimate relationship wasn't great. And that was my big reason. I said, you know, I damn it, I'm not that old a guy. I deserve to have some happiness in my life. I deserve to be with a woman who wants to be with me, that I want to be with her. Not this friend relationship, and not relationships that are full of argument and, and despair and constant bickering. It's just not way for anybody to live. Now, those relationships can be saved, and I also do relationship coaching as a result of all that, because sometimes it leads to that. But you've got to come up with your reason, and sometimes somebody will say, you know what, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Well, we have a way of doing that as well. However, asking that question, what is that one big pervasive issue that's kicking your butt today that you'd love to get rid of, and you writing it down is what I ask everybody that wants to, would like to work with me and be a client that wants to come on board and go through the 21 Days Change Your Mind program, they need to do that. They need to write that question down. They need to write the five or six things underneath that will change their mind exponentially as a result of it, and then send it to me through my, my webpage. And if they do not, I choose to recognize, after these many years working in human needs psychology, that they're not willing to really change their mind. They might think they want to go through the motions, but if you can't do that one little step, that one thing, and somebody says, well, what if it isn't the right thing? What if it isn't the right question? What if it's just what I thought about this second? doesn't matter. really doesn't matter. If it's the first thing that comes to your mind and it sounds silly to you, it's not necessarily going to be that. What it is going to do, however, and what matters is that you will find and uncover and reveal. It's like peeling the layers back on the onion, so to speak. You will find the heart of what the issue is. You will get to it. When you work with a person like myself that's trained and knows what to do with this type of situation, we all need it. The saying now, Ron, 85% of the world's population has some form of low self-esteem. That's some pretty high numbers. And I guess with what's going on out there today, I can kind of see and feel that. Yeah. And, and I really like how you, you talk about two things. Uh, is One is figuring out what your why is, why you why you want to do what you want to do, what's, what's the reason. And I, I'm huge on the why. If the why is big enough, you'll find a way. And the why exactly. has to be big enough that it, that it pulls you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's critical you stuff, forward. folks. It, it, it is, Ron. It's, um, you know, there's a why for everything, isn't there? Some people say, well, why do you want to know why? What's it matter? Well, it matters a lot when it comes to what's going on in your mind and what causes you to think a certain way. Now, I'll take this a step further, and I'll give a little bit more as far as the tips go. We all have what we call issues in life. We, we, we weren't born with them. We learned them, right? And, and they're, due, they're due to the relationships with all those people you've had anything to do with since your life of being born. Parents, friends, relatives, you name it. Right up to this very second, you are a product of all of that. And some people say, well, I don't think so. You know, I'm a self-made person. I taught my, okay, you do teach yourself a lot from adolescence up, but from years of zero up to five, six, and seven, you're pretty much under the guise of another, of a person. Call that person the master, right? They're pretty much helping you. Teachers, think of the school, the educational system we have right up through the 12th grade in the United States. You are being taught things that they want you to learn. So therefore, you are a product of that environment. You are actually living what you learned. Now, some of that learned stuff is not all great stuff, and it isn't about the, the educational stuff or whether I'll ever use calculus or whether I'll ever use trigonometry. It boils down to what did you learn from a social matter 
And what did you learn from the way you want to work and run your life? And everything you do today is predicated on that stuff. Even when we're sleeping, by the way, we think and dream based on stuff that's happened, stuff we've learned, stuff we've seen. You come up with what we call a belief system. I call it BS. And some people will laugh and say, oh, the BS. And I said, yeah, I'm not talking about the stuff from the bowl. But, you know, in some instances it is. It is BS because you are living, working, and operating. Your modus operandi is based on your BS. And when your BS is out of line and you're not quite sure because you're not sure, this is unconscious, subconscious stuff. We can't stir it all up in the frontal lobes of the brain. We've got to put it somewhere so it goes into what we know is the human brain file system. It goes back there. It stores. But here's the thing. It never forgets it, though you don't consciously remember it every day. What happens when somebody triggers you? We call it the trigger like the gun going off. Let's say you have a reaction to somebody who says something, does something, cuts you off in traffic, whatever it is. You're either going to go to anger, you're going to go to laughter, you're going to go to somewhere in between. You're going to have a reaction. That reaction is predicated on the trigger of a preconceived notion from your past and what you've learned. That is how the brain operates. It's called the flight or fight syndrome. It's what keeps us going. And it's just the way we are. They call it the premodal mind, mind or the, or the uh, <laughs> they have other terms for it as well. So I guess when we were cave people, you know, we had to either fight or fight, right? And the women predominantly were the, were the nurturers, the, the keeper of the home and the babies, et cetera, and that protection level. The guys were the big protection. They had to go out and kill the animals, bring in the food. Some of that stuff is still in our mind. That's what works, what causes us to work. But how, how much is that is really serving you is what it boils down to. But when you have that reaction, it triggers all kinds of stuff. And it's going to trigger what you know from an emotional level, and it's going to cause you to react that way. I love it. And, Jeff, we're down to, like, two minutes. I want to make sure the listeners get your contact info. But I also want to uh, let the listeners know that whatever all this, the things that you're talking about, if people can get a handle on them, address them, they're like causal factors, things that you don't even understand but are holding you back from achieving greater success, whether it's in business or in personal life. So if, if, if they can contact you, work on these things, uh, it will help them just find more happiness and more success in life as a whole. Am I correct? Absolutely, Ron. That, that's it in a nutshell, and that's my goal, and that's my serving to my fellow human beings is to get that stuff out there and, and find out that in a 21-day period, and typically even after the first session, they find massive relief because we get right okay. to it. We get right to it, and yep. it's in the comfort of their own home. Uh, Contact-wise, I know we're short of time. It's www.2121daystochangeyourmind.com. That's 21. 21- 21 days to change your and there's a little page right there and they can say i'm ready for more you can have a free complimentary 30-minute discovery session with me no dollars and cents the only expense you're going to put into it is your time which i realize is valuable and what you get from that 30 minutes i choose to find will be extremely valuable for you excellent thank you very much jeff uh, listeners this episode as all episodes will be archived on my website rcstechnology.com as well as WCAP 980 AM's website. You've been listening to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ronald Kuhlman, where we help our customers and clients attract, convert, retain more of their ideal clients.